So I've been using Scratch for quite a long time now. I've made countless projects, even if most of them ended up getting trashed. But some of my old games did have some real potential, so I've been working over the last couple of weeks to remake, remaster and republish some of the best games for you guys to play. So welcome back to part 2, and let's keep on cranking out these games, baby. I said do it, baby. So last time we were working on this game, we added some nice terrain generation. We added the ability to place fire and added a little functional toolbar so we can select different tools. Although last time we couldn't get the fire to spread. And the reason why we couldn't do that is because we just had way too many clones and if we had them all checking all the time if they're touching a fire sprite then it just completely lags out and crashes the game. Now I did experiment with using lists to try and combat this but it just didn't really end up working. So instead I think we may have to just kill some of these clones. And just like that we have considerably less clones. And now if we activate our code to make fire spread, we can test how much lag it's given us now. Right, so let's try placing down some fire. Oh! Okay, well that's a lot more promising. I mean obviously it's spreading way too fast, so now we should change the behaviour of fire so it doesn't instantly obliterate everything. So now if costume number is equal to the fire sprite, then it'll wait between five and eight seconds and turn into ash, then wait a bit more, and then turn into dirt. And hopefully now fire shouldn't spread as fast. So let's set something on fire. Okay, it's still spreading just as fast, but hopefully, yeah, there we go, it turns into ash, which should then turn into dirt. Okay, yeah, so we're heading in the right direction. We just need to make fire spread a lot slower, which I've done pretty easily by just adding a little random wait time. Okay, so it's spreading a lot slower now. Maybe a little bit too slow. So now it's just like kind of barely keeping itself alive. So maybe we should make it more likely that fire will spread. Okay, now I'd say that's a pretty realistic rate for fire to spread. It's not totally obliterating everything, it might fizzle itself out, but it's still got enough fuel to do quite a bit of damage. Okay, so the fire's finished spreading, it's done a considerable amount of damage, but I'd say that's pretty accurate to a real wildfire. Now obviously we don't want the dirt to just stay dirt, so we're going to add a behaviour for the dirt, so that if it's touching water or another grass tile, then it'll slowly turn back into a grass tile. So the fire spreads, it turns into ash, which then turns into dirt, which should now hopefully turn into grass oh yeah there we go and now it'll slowly turn back into grass now you may have also noticed i added the ability for grass to turn into fertile grass now this happens quite slowly but it's a good way to make sure that fertile grass can actually reproduce okay so that's the fire cycle done now i think it's time to add a couple more tools and i think the next tools i want to add is to be able to place down water and sand and grass so you can basically paint and create your own world as you please. So I'm gonna set up the toolbar and I'm gonna make it look a lot nicer than just writing fire. And after that, we need to add the functionality to be able to change tiles into whatever type of tile you like. Okay, so now we have all the different tools and then to make the tiles change depending on the tools is very easy. We can use pretty much the same code as the fire sprite, but instead we will just switch costume to tool. So now if we select, for example, stone, we can then start placing stuff. And if we wanted to, we can just make another river or something like that. Maybe add a nice little bay. Although at the moment you have to click on every tile individually to change them. So instead of when this sprite clicked, we then instead check if it's touching mouse and mouse down. And then we should be able to now drag it across the screen. No. Oh, I put it on the wrong one. <laughs> right, let's put that in there. Now, fingers crossed, we should be able to, yeah. Now we can just kind of hover around and paint as much as we like. Now, I reckon it's about time we give this game a menu. Now for the menu, I'm just going to keep on generating new levels until I find one that I really like the look of. So I'm going to keep on scrolling through these 
and I'll come back to you once I've found the right one. Okay, so the menu is done. Now I selected a few different backgrounds, so as you sit in the menu it scrolls through them. Then you have your play button here, you can press it, and then it'll start to load. Then just like that, you're in the game. So that's basically the game done. I'll put a link in the description to my itch page, which is where I'll be uploading the game. We've also got a discord for discussing basically anything, usually Scratch, some sort of game development. If you want to join that little community, then there'll also be a link. Please consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.